Our topic today is the Vantage Equinox Comfort Widget. By comfort, we are referring to heating and cooling functionality associated with your thermostats. Since thermostats are only one part of the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning system, or HVAC, and because there are some technical things about thermostats and HVAC systems that are beyond the scope of this video, we have created an additional tutorial video for HVAC. We will assume some familiarity with the concepts of operation of HVAC systems within this video. If you would like more instruction or clarification, please refer to that video, that tutorial video. At the dashboard layer, we are presented with quick access control and feedback of a single thermostat. Which thermostat is displayed here can be selected in the editing mode, which we will examine later. The information and control you have available from the primary thermostat at this dashboard view includes the thermostat name, the room temperature, this is reported by the thermostat and updated in real time. You have the option to display this in all temperatures in either Fahrenheit or Celsius. The operation mode, the top half of the widget panel displays a series of waves. The color of these waves actually has significance. If the thermostat is in auto mode, as we see here, both blue and red will be mixed within these curves. If in cool mode, only blue will appear. If in heat mode, only red will appear. If the mode is off, there's no color, but rather the curves appear gray. Next, we have the active schedule. If the thermostat is currently assigned to a schedule, the name of that schedule will, be, will appear here with the words using schedule above it. If instead the thermostat is in manual mode, it will say none. Next we have the current thermostat status. The thermostat status is displayed representing the current communication of the thermostat to the HVAC system. Status options are cooling, which is available in cool and auto modes, or heating, which is available in heat and auto modes, or idle, which is available in any operation mode. Finally, we have the temperature set points. Wherever a set point appears, it will be colorized to represent the set point that it is for. Heat is red, cool is blue. Notice that the set points displayed will depend on the operation mode. So this constitutes an additional clue as to the current mode. If we are in the heat mode, we only see the heat set point. If we are in the cool mode, we only see the cool set point. And again, we see both of them in the auto mode, but only if the thermostat is currently idle. If the thermostat is calling for heat, we will only see the heat set point. Or if there is an active call for cooling, then only the cool set point will appear. If the mode is off, the word off replaces the set point display. Now the buttons to the left and right of the set points are for adjusting the, thermostat, or the set points up and down. If we are in manual mode, this change will apply until another adjustment is made. But if a schedule is active, these set point changes are temporary. and we would consider this a limited time override. Once we adjust the scheduled set points, we initiate a one hour temporary override of that schedule. Once we have done that, then we see that that appears with an adjustment plus and minus, and we can adjust that temporary override for up to six hours in one hour increments. Now once the override period is over, the regular schedule will resume. As the override period progresses, the display will count down, still in one hour increments, to show how much time is left. As you examine the widget for a thermostat that is an override, it might say two hours, for example, which means that it's somewhere between two and a half and one and a half hours. The countdown occurs when halfway through an hour. So when we're at one and a half hours, the count will change to one hour. But if you now readjust the length of the override period during override, it will start counting down again according to the new value you set. So for example, when the display says one hour, it may be that there are only 40 minutes left in the override period. 
when you increment it now by one, it's going to display two hours and you will have started the period countdown over. So the period will continue for two hours from this point. And when the temporary override period ends, there is a brief message resuming schedule, after which it will return to the steady state message of using schedule. As we touch the discovery dots to dive into the full page view of the comfort widget, the last thermostat we looked at will appear. For the currently displayed thermostat, we have more options here than at the dashboard layer. On the left hand side of the display, we see information that is similar to what we see on the dashboard layer with a few differences, which include operation specific set points appear with individual set point adjustment buttons. Now, any set points that don't apply for the current operation mode will be faded out and locked for adjustment. If there is an outdoor temperature sensor attached to this thermostat, we see it displayed here. Otherwise, the information is the same. Current temperature, applied schedule, and active status of heating or cooling. However, if a schedule is active, here we also see the time at which the current period started and the time at which the next period is scheduled to start. The right-hand section provides less commonly used controls, including the ability to apply a schedule or to place the thermostat in manual mode. Also, the ability to select operation mode, whether it be heat, cool, auto, or off. And finally, we have selection of the fan mode, which is either going to be auto or on. Now we can swipe left or right to get to other thermostats, or we can touch the name of the currently viewed thermostat to view the quick access ribbon wherein we can navigate directly to the thermostat of our choice. In the fixed leftmost position before any of the thermostats, we can access schedules. Schedules are universal across profiles, and all are accessible for selection from any thermostat. There are four schedules to choose from. Originally, these schedules come labeled Home, Away, Vacation, and Custom, suggesting that you might dynamically change schedules depending on occupation status. Might I recommend instead that occupation status be handled through Schedule Hold and Schedule Resume programming that your Vantage programmer can provide for non schedulable circumstances, such as when no one is in the house for an extended period or when an area, such as a guest room, is vacant. In a typical Vantage home, there may be several thermostats, each controlling its own zone of heating and or cooling. My recommendation is to define up to four schedules that can be used to meet the different scheduling needs of the multiple zones. For example, I have changed here the schedule names to primary for those zones that are frequently occupied, secondary for areas where we can expect to occupy in a different pattern or may want different temperatures, bedrooms, because most of us like it cooler when we sleep, and office, particularly apropos for those areas we occupy when home during the day, such as a home office. I will assign thermostats according to these classifications in order to achieve the balance between comfort and energy savings objectives for the varying specific usage of each area. These schedules assignments are fairly permanent, not changing assignments usually, although of course you could do so if you wanted to. Another way you could use schedules that would suggest changing assignments would be seasonal schedules, which would then reassign to each thermostat as each new season begins. Before we take a look at assignment of schedules to thermostat, let's take a look at editing a schedule. Touch the name of the schedule you want to modify. Here you can touch the schedule name at the top left of the screen and we can edit the schedule name. If we examine the schedule itself, we see that there are four periods per day, morning, day, evening, and night, and each column represents a day of the week. As we look at this sample schedule, we see by the arrows that the settings for Monday periods apply as well to Tuesday through Friday, as indicated by the follow-on arrows. Saturday has a different period start time and different set points, which follow through to Sunday as well as the arrow indicates. Notice that between Friday and Saturday, each period is separated by a link. 
as you touch any of those links, it will, they will turn into an arrow representing that that period will now follow the period defined by settings earlier in the week. Conversely, if we touch an arrow between subsequent day periods, we break the link and display a separate time, uh, start time and set points. This linking or breaking of links can be used in any combination that you wish, allowing for repetition where that simplifies scheduling or for separation when flexibility matters. In this view, we can see the start time for each period and the set points that will be used for that period. To edit a start time and or set points, touch on the set point display. An adjust schedule window will appear that allows you to modify these settings. Now if we want to cancel, we would hit the X, but if we want to make it apply, we touch the check mark. By the time we are done doing all of our edits, we can either cancel or we can accept by hitting the check here. Now our final step is going to be to apply the desired schedule to the various thermostats. As we scroll through, we determine which schedule is the appropriate one to apply, and we select it, and that will apply it. Master bedroom, I select the bedroom, the office, select the office, rec room is going to be a secondary, exercise is following the same secondary, and the theater I am going to leave it at manual because I am not there enough to have a set schedule. So we'll just leave that on the manual thermos or manual set points. The guest room, I'm going to want to follow the bedroom schedule, but for now, since nobody is occupying the guest bedroom, I'm going to put it in manual mode. We'll wrap up our review of the Vantage Equinox Comfort Widget by examining the editing layer of the widget. It's pretty simple. We simply have a list of the thermostats on the project, and we can select here which ones will be shown within the profile, and we can change their order of display. Remember, as in all of them, the very first one is the one that will display on the dashboard layer. Um, now that's all that really there is to the editing. But I did mention before that temperatures and set points could be displayed in Celsius or Fahrenheit. Now that's not done under the editing, but rather under the widget itself. So let's return home, go to the widget, to settings of the profile, and then we click on options and we find Celsius. Now when you create a new profile, you will go through this option as well to be able to select Celsius. And once that is created, then Celsius will be applied to all of the temperatures within that profile. And this is independent of other profiles that might be viewing it differently. You'll notice here that we are displaying the uh, temperatures in half degree increments. The reason for that is because it is a larger value, one degree Celsius, almost double that of a Fahrenheit. This concludes our overview of the Vantage Equinox Comfort Widget. If you would like further understanding of the HVAC concepts that we've touched on here, don't forget to review our HVAC tutorial. For those of you who are Vantage integrators, please also review the implementation video for this widget. Now, Don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for ongoing updates on Vantage. And thanks for watching.